anyone who wants more muscle mass, I would say, go get it like this. I mean, this shit got me. It fucking got me. Gotcha. If I would have done these, I would have been puking. Okay. That's why I had, I mean, you I didn't, I don't want to puke all over your gym. That's all right. It's all right. Can we take it back to 95? Before we have this drama in our lives. Just staring at the screen every day and night. Hey everyone, Marcus Philly here with functionalbodybuilding.com. And today my special guest is my friend, Ben Patrick, also known as the knees over toes guy. Ben is a pioneer at using movement to get people out of knee pain. And when you're going to be training to stay healthy and fit over many, many years, it's likely that you're going to encounter pain or injury at some point. The problem is that when people encounter pain, they often have to step outside of the gym and head towards physical therapy or medical interventions. But there's not an easy road to continue staying active and not only rehab an injury, but build strength and resilience without the fear that you're going to mess up your body and get right back to square one with your injury. A question I get all the time now is, Marcus, how do we bring these powerful movements that Ben is using in his programs and bring them into a complete strength conditioning training program like your own? So today we're here to show you five moves that Ben uses to get people out of knee pain and how to bring them into your strength, hypertrophy, and conditioning training so that you can stay consistent in your training, look good, and move well for decades to come. All right, to kick this off, we're gonna be starting with the concept of full knee bend at your level, of course. We're gonna illustrate that with the ATG split squat and I'm gonna showcase how this can be done in a hypertrophy superset designed for putting on muscle inside a training program. So this can be started with just your own body weight of trying to get that full bend, which means for most people, lifting the front heel. Now he's gonna actually be working towards keeping the heel down. He has additional load, just gonna do five each side. And What's the most important thing that we learned so far is that assisted is okay. You see this? So without pain going to your level of full knee bend, most people are gonna have to do this one side at a time. What am I gonna do with partially artificial kneecap here? No surgeries on this side that are loose. So no matter how much double-legged squatting I did, my knees never felt quite right until I put it together here. So we want to master this first without weight, with the heel up to get that full coverage before we start going to weight. What the weight is going to do is then actually start pulling us deeper and deeper into that ankle mobility. So in the workout example that you're seeing, we are pairing the HEG split squat with an upper body movement for hypertrophy. In functional bodybuilding, we use a lot of unilateral exercises. And in a hypertrophy setting, we're looking to build time under tension. And what we effectively do when we use something like an ATG split squat or a single leg exercise is it helps us to double the time under tension because you have to do both sides of your body. So you get a bigger stress response from an exercise like this when it's placed inside of a hypertrophy superset. Choosing an exercise like this with a big range of motion on top of increased time under tension is a double win when it comes to increasing the intensity and the stimulus that you get in a hypertrophy setting. But furthermore, when we build strength in a big range of motion, we're also going to maintain the full amount of positions that you're capable of in that joint or that movement pattern. What that does is it helps repair your body as you're trying to build muscle. This is going to keep you athletic, moving safely in any direction that you want to go. Another key point of bringing a movement like the ATG split squat into your hypertrophy training is looking at how you are going to superset that with the correct second exercise. By pairing this with an upper body strength movement like the pull up, it has a extremely potent effect. See, we increase lactic acid accumulation by getting these opposing muscle groups or separate muscle groups training simultaneously. What that does is it will spike growth hormone later on in the day, which is excellent for helping build muscle. You can also maximize the time that you're in the gym by building intensity in one body part while another body part rests. So you don't have to worry about taking that additional rest period to let one body part recover because you're actually using that additional rest period to get work done in another area. Additionally, over a period of weeks, you are going to be able to progress your intensity by just shortening the amount of rest in between these movements and sets. 
So something you'll see a lot in my FBB programs. We will start with a longer rest period in the early weeks of training and progress to shorter rest periods. We're gonna aim for time under tension in these exercises from 40 to 60 seconds, so you're constantly moving for that length of time, making it both metabolic, aerobic, and strength building. All right, for number two today, we're gonna to be talking about the concept of reversing, specifically the reverse sled drag, and how we bring that into lower body power sets. Maybe we just invented the, the sissy sled drag. So his goal is to get his knee over his toes on every step. You're gonna have to contract your glutes and lean the fuck back. Reach, reach, reach. Good job. I'll do one more of those, good job. So it's very important. If you only get one training concept out of this, it's to understand that every exercise scales to your level. No joke, 10 minute backward walk a day is actually one of the best things you can do. Anyone older in your life, that could change their life in terms of preventing cartilage breakdown that winds up in knee replacements. Now, at mine and Marcus level, if we wanted to, we could keep those glutes locked. So this would only make us stronger and more bulletproof. So you see the first thing we're trying to understand is just that whatever's hurting our knees, the stronger we are in reverse of that, the less chance we have of the knee pain. And it does scale to any level. So we just saw, we just saw the easiest is walking backwards, letting those toes bend, having the knee over the toe. Walking backwards would be the easiest. I kind of want to do one more. Inside this specific conditioning workout that you're seeing, we're using the sled drag and some of the movements in here to implement control points. See, we value building a client's work capacity, not just their strength and aesthetic. See, your ability to complete a variety of different tasks and movements at varying levels of fatigue defines your work capacity. If you want your workouts to help you feel good, still leave you with energy for life, a broad ability to tackle tasks under fatigue will help get you there. And it'll also help you build great body composition along the way. Now I talked about control points. See, the movement selection within a conditioning workout like this and the proper design can be the difference between something that feels empowering and moves you forward and a workout that crushes your soul and leaves you feeling like you just got wrecked. As Ben says, performing reverse sled drags alone is a great tool to help build bulletproof knees. But when we combine this with some respiratory and local muscle fatigue from rowing and deadlifts like you're seeing, we can create an even more pronounced full body stimulus that will challenge athletes at all different levels and continue to give you that reversing reps that you need to keep your knees strong for years to come. All right, for number three, we're talking balancing the calf. We're gonna be training the front of the shin with tibialis raises is this muscle, the tibialis. That's the first line of defense against knee pain. The weaker that is, the more undue trauma is gonna come up into your knee in the first place. And again, you don't even have to put load on your knees to start this one. So Marcus can do one set to tap out over here. This is about 20% of Marcus's weight. All right, he's gonna let it full stretch. I put it a little heavier than 20%. Good, now at the bottom, I want you to pause every time. Go to the bottom and pause, there you go. So you feel that stretch coming through here. Many of us also have ankle impingement issues, but have we ever actually tried to address it? Now hold that top position, good. Now lower down, good. We're not counting on this one, we're just going. Good job, and then lower down. Now flex down, now flex it, good. This is the muscle that is closest to the patellar tendon, just underneath it. Holy crap, do I wish someone ever made me train this muscle. Now, a buddy of mine in Australia who makes home gym equipment made this so we can all have something to train this muscle. You just tell me when you're done. Look at this. This is a world-class athlete able to take this muscle to failure. Good job. Yeah. Yep. So where does the tibialis raise come in to functional bodybuilding training? Well, one of the things that we love to talk about is preparation for training or warm-ups. Specific joint specific warmups that are gonna optimize your training outcome. So you wanna to prepare to squat better. I wanna squat better, a lot of people do. 
but you might be missing out on some overlooked ways to develop a strong, beautiful, and pain-free squat. One that you can see from across the room and say, dang, that's a solid rep. If people warm up for squats at all, it usually looks like some simple band work, like a lateral band walk, or some glute work in the form of a hip thrust. But what about the muscles that support deep ankle and hip flexion? Yeah, both are so vital to squatting and they're almost never getting addressed. So this is why it's important for me to be introducing you to the tibialis raise. It has been a terrific way to not only support bulletproofing in the way that Ben has discussed, but also to help prepare for deeper and more stable squats. When we actually go to squat, we should be thinking about actively pulling ourselves into position. What that requires is the anterior tibialis muscle and the hip flexors to fire. See, this ankle and hip flexor warm-up that you're watching me go through, this protocol is one way to optimize squatting function inside a functional bodybuilding persist program that we're offering. So if you want to squat with more balance and stability while also making your knees more resilient for life, then think about introducing these tibialis raises into your training. All right, coming in at number four, strong behind the knees. That's the concept here. We're going to be looking at the Nordic hamstring curl specifically. Why not be world-class strong right behind here? Notice, if I'm going into a jump or something, the weaker I am there, again, I'm gonna put undue stress on my knee instead of trusting the hamstrings to do their job. This reduces wear and tear, plus, if we do get into a tricky situation, this might be the exercise that prevents you from having, oh, I had a freak blah injury. One of my missions with functional bodybuilding is to help you balance every aspect of movement in all directions as this is often overlooked in most training programs that I've seen. So adopting exercises like the Nordic Curl, it gives our functional bodybuilding training splits even more front to back specificity around the knee joint. So as I said when we started this episode, some of you are not just trying to get out of pain, some of you wanna build strength. Within this superset that you're watching, which could be done one day a week, I'm able to apply absolute strength development principles with thoughtfulness around the movement selection, which is gonna help ensure that we create balance strength from front to back. So you're building strength, but you're not putting yourself at risk for injury down the road. In this particular superset, you're seeing me perform a deficit snatch grip deadlift, which is actually a bit more of an anterior chain focused movement. I know it's a pull from the ground. Yeah, it's a deadlift, but because of the position, because of the deficit and where my hands are placed on the bar, I'm getting into a very deep squat at the bottom, which is actually forcing me to engage my quads and the front of my legs to drive out of the hole. While on the other exercise, the Nordic curl, this is specifically targeting behind the knees and the back of the leg. Powerfully balanced supersets like this allow us to build athletic strength without compromise to knee health and joint integrity. Okay, last but not least, we're talking deep squats. We're gonna talk about specifically the VMO squat or otherwise known as the cyclist squat. I found that the VMO squat is a very effective way to get a wide variety of athletes into a full knee bend, a deep squat safely. See, if we can scale down to the individual's pain-free ability, then it ensures great hip, knee, and ankle flexibility while we strengthen and build muscles of the lower body. See, movements that regress down easily and capture a big range of motion lend themselves so well to FBB training. So take a look at Ben and I as we dive into showing you how we can put this exact movement into your conditioning work. Inside our conditioning work, functional bodybuilding truly emphasizes quality movement in all the conditioning sessions that we do. We don't wanna just try and get the work done we try to achieve optimal positions and range of motion along the way. This way, we build muscle, maintain joint health, increase functional range, all while we condition our bodies. Selecting movements like the VMO squat while we condition helps us achieve those traits. Yeah, I like to tell people like, if you're functional worried about getting muscle, bulky yeah. and being, putting on too much, like it doesn't happen overnight. It Not really to mention, takes... look, at the, look at the ranges. Every row, I'm fighting modern life. Yes. Every squat, I'm fighting years of avoiding the knees, mm -hmm. you know, or trying to push through a PR at yep. the expense of knee pain. Yep. So, the I mean, shit got me. It fucking got me. Got if I would have done these, I would have been puking. Okay. That's why I had, I mean, I, didn't, I don't want to puke all over your gym. That's all right. It's all right. But I, I freaking love it. For someone like me, 
I don't even think someone has to, um, don't think of it as like an all or nothing, right? Yeah, absolutely. For someone like me, I can look at, I can, you know, be a member of your program and still apply it to my life. Yeah. No joke, I think even one of these sessions would make a massive impact. Once, once a week. And if you do the whole program, you know. If you hit one session like this for each major movement pattern, so if it was like a, a hinge and a push day and a squat and a pull up day, there's massive amount of benefit that can happen there. And for, for us, and just so everyone knows, like I chose the toughest of the toughest thing I could put on a piece of paper to just put you but through the paces. But it's simple. But it simplifies so much. And we could have done any of these exercises in a regress form using the same regressions you talk about yeah. with loading regressions. Yep. This could have just been body weight, yep. VMO squats, Again, the ring rows can regress a tremendous amount. We could have even put a band up on the pull-up bar and done band rows, which is another way of regressing that even further. The tuck-ups could have been done supine on the floor, laying down. Like, for example, I always base everything on my mom. Yeah. My mom could easily do this. She can walk backwards. She can yep. drag she something could. backwards. Totally. She can do the ring, this scales, to, the ring row yep. scales to any level. Yes. She can do her squats without weight. Yes. Um, and so like for me, I do my five 30 minute sessions a week, but the intention with that is then it, it bulletproofs my body to do other things. Yeah. So now it's really fun because now I'm able to like jump in and do stuff like this without joint pain. Yeah. But now if I want, this gives me another option in addition to basketball, you know, it used to be like, oh, I'd bulletproof my body to play basketball two games a week or whatever. Yeah. I could easily do two sessions. Of, you know what I mean? It's um, when something's really good, I think everyone could use it, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So. And it's just another way of, I see this as another way of progressing great movement quality in the resistance training. So you decide I'm committed to bulletproofing my knees. This would enhance anything. Any, yeah. Any, any sport, anyone who wants more muscle mass, I would say, go get it like this. As a takeaway point for you today, I wanna offer you this bit of advice. Consider slowing down while you hit your next conditioning workout and attempting on every rep to achieve a complete range of motion. If you see people in the gym around you doing bro reps, shorten range of motion, it might be effective to accomplish some traits, but it will ultimately leave something on the table in the way of healthy and strong joints through a full range of motion that life may demand for later on. All right, to wrap up today, the way we move in life and sport places a high demand on our knees. Unchecked, modern life will inevitably lead you down a path of knee pain. And let's face it, pain sucks. So first, if you haven't checked out my video on how we can get you out of pain, go check the link in the description below. And if you wanna build muscle, get faster, or just simply feel better, then there is a way to incorporate the same movements that get you out of knee pain and use them to keep you that way while you build the body of your dreams. So no matter what your goal is, my mission is to show you through functional bodybuilding frameworks how you don't have to sacrifice your goal in order to keep your joints healthy and vice versa. See, gaining muscle shouldn't mean deterioration of your joints. Building your one rep max back squat shouldn't mean inevitable knee pain. Okay, now it's your turn. Time to put these movements and formats to work for you. Go click that link in the description below. You can learn more about functional bodybuilding training programs there. I'll see you next time. This episode is brought to you by Vivo Barefoot. You can visit vivobarefoot.com forward slash US forward slash look good, move well, and get our special offer. Vivo Barefoot shoes are the shoes that I have been wearing for the better part of the last two years. I transitioned to these for all my functional fitness needs for my daily life, and I cannot recommend it enough to go with the zero barefoot minimalist shoes that they offer. They're not only attractive and look really cool, but they are going to support your feet, your health, your body in the way that they were meant to be supported. I can't encourage you guys enough. Go get a pair of minimalist shoes. And since we have this awesome deal for you, get a pair of Vivo Barefoots. They look cool. They're super durable. The first pair that I got was back in February of 2020, and I still wear those to this day. They rock.
Hey everyone, Marcus Philly here with Functional Bodybuilding. In a recent video with my friend Ben Patrick, the knees over toes guy, I introduced you to five movements that can get you out of knee pain and how you can incorporate them into your workouts using functional bodybuilding principles. Well, today we're going one step further to answer a common question that you've had if you've ever encountered pain or injury before. And that question is, I've gotten out of pain, so now what? Now, take a minute to pause. If you're still having knee pain, I highly recommend you check out Ben's programs that I'll link to in the description below. He'll show you how to resolve knee pain through movements and maintain your levels of strength. But what many people also wanna know is how you can progress your athleticism after a setback and how to train your full body to look good and move well while also honing great movement practices that won't send you right back down into the pain and injury cycle. So today, Ben brought his wife and his family, his dog Lucky, also that we could show you a simple functional bodybuilding workout that you can do that can be scaled to meet your skill level and needs. See, I wrote this workout for Ben or somebody like him that wants to do another type of training, but also benefit from the aesthetics, strength, and conditioning progress that you can make within functional bodybuilding. So while workouts in my full program usually take between 60 and 90 minutes, this one's gonna be able to be done in about 30 to 40 and still leave you with time for other activities and pursuits that you're into. All right, let's take a look at the workout itself. Oftentimes, we will start functional bodybuilding with a warm-up, and an effective warm-up is as simple often as implementing training exercises that you're gonna see in the training session ahead, but just doing them fully regressed down in a format like a body weight or assisted version of that exercise. So the perfect example of that is that we're gonna be doing weighted ATG split squats in our workout today. And in the warm up, you're gonna see that same powerful movement for strengthening your knees, ankles, and hips, the ATG split squat. You're gonna see it done with body weight or assistance. The goal here with the movement points of performance are you're aiming to cover your calf with your entire hamstring and maybe even your glute while keeping the torso tall and the back leg straight. The magic in this movement is in choosing the right variation for your own level of strength and mobility. And as you move, you may find that can move from an assisted version to an unassisted version, or you can always stay in an assisted squat to help you find that full range of motion, which is most important in that exercise. In our warm up, we're also going to be doing a few band pull aparts. Uh, this is an upper body work uh, that is helpful for getting you prepped for the strength work to come, which is going to include ring rows and some pull-ups. See, band pull-aparts are a simple and scalable way to engage the rotator cuff and the upper back muscles before you get into those pull-ups and those rows. All right, the way we are structuring this strength piece makes it such that we don't need a tremendous amount of warm-up. We just need some movement prep, and we can get right into the functional bodybuilding strength component of this workout. We often superset our strength movements to allow you to be efficient with your time and also not to tax opposing muscle groups. And that's an important part of the prescription. We definitely prioritize tempo and range of motion. Both of these will maximize your time under tension on the muscle tissue. See the total time that you're under load is much more impactful for these training formats than the total number of reps and the weight that you lift. What we're looking for is that you're gonna get 30 to 60 seconds of work on every single set. So stay diligent about your rest periods and get the right stimulus here by doing so. What you'll notice in this prescription is that there are ranges of reps, sets, and rest times. This isn't random. In fact, with very specific prescriptions to these variables, we're able to intentionally progress you week by week, rather than just hope for the best with your training results. In functional bodybuilding progressions, over time we can add more sets, as well as decrease rest times between movements. These are all ways to challenge you without necessarily having to add more weight to the bar or pick up heavier dumbbells, which can often compromise the quality of the athlete's movement doing the workout. If you were thinking this, or maybe you're thinking this, hey Marcus, there's no way I can crank out 10 strict pull-ups. Don't worry, since every single functional bodybuilding workout has movement regressions, these will also help you develop the strength to increase your pull-up ability over time. So as an example with the strict pull-up, we can regress it in any one of the following three ways. Number one, you could perform a band-assisted strict pull-up. You would perform it maybe with the same reps and the same tempo as the prescribed strict pull-up. Alternatively, you could do a pull-up negative. This is where you jump up chin over the bar and you lower yourself slowly to the bottom of the range of motion. You do that for anywhere from four to six seconds per rep and maybe you hit five reps 
in place of your strict pull-ups. Lastly, you could do a lat pull-down or a banded lat pull-down if you don't have access to a lat pull-down machine. And that, again, could be done at the same reps, the same tempo as the strict pull-up that was prescribed, just making it much more accessible to somebody who doesn't have that strength component yet in the strict pull-up. The same thing goes for the ATG split squat. I even showed you already in the warm-up, we can do this assisted or with body weight. But as you can see in the actual training workout, we had four different levels of athletes all training the movement at different levels that work for them. Somebody using a barbell on their back, that was me, at 50% of my body weight. Somebody else using kettlebells on each side of their body uh, at 25% of their body weight per hand. We could also substitute in dumbbells at, at your side, elevate the front foot onto a box, or again, perform these at body weight following the prescription that you saw already in the same superset combination to achieve the same strength and hypertrophy benefits. So he's still going for that really nice hamstring covered calf. He's crushing my fingers there. Feeling those back hip flexor stretch. Oh yeah. So the best load is the one that stretches you deepest. If you go too heavy, you'll shore enough. If you go too light, it won't stretch you down. But it's a gradual process because we're only talking about the load you can do without any pain. Okay, as I said at the beginning, this is a condensed short workout, 30 to 40 minutes in total. So we're right around the 15 to 20 minute mark and we've already finished our warm up and our strength component. And now we're gonna dive right into our conditioning finisher. Functional bodybuilding is very thoughtful with conditioning. We wanna make sure that we're getting the right result. And it's not just a random hit of intensity that will spike your heart rate with no purpose. The aim here is to build your work capacity through exposing your body to tasks under fatigue. And the challenge is to do so without losing movement quality as you go through the exercises. I stress this so much when I talk to coaches that this, the thoughtful selection of exercises is what's gonna make this possible. See, by keeping the complexity low enough for an athlete at hand, we ensure that we can get the work done safely and still challenge their capacity. When working under fatigue, it isn't the time to try out some super hard exercise that is better for the Instagram highlight reel than it is for actual fitness. All right, let's come back to regressions. If you were intimidated by some of the numbers or the movements that you saw on the screen or that you're seeing being demoed right here, don't stress, right? Just like the strength portion of the training session, you can regress these movements, reps, and loads all together. With each movement, you can see how various athletes are approaching them in their own unique way. The slant board goblet squats can regress down to body weight only, as an example. Ring rows get progressively easier as you just change the angle of your body. So whether you're advanced or you're relatively new to training, you're gonna be able to tackle that exercise. Leg tucks can also be performed in a dip support position or even seated on a bench rather than hanging from the bar and of course, a weighted version of the leg tuck can always be regressed down to a body weight version too. And again, depending on your level, the weight that we have on the sled that you see us pulling backwards can be stripped down considerably, even to the point where you might even simply just walk backwards for 100 meters at a good pace. Now, the last point is that there are 60 repetitions of each exercise in this conditioning workout, minus the sled dragging but we could easily scale that down to 50 or even 30 reps by just changing the repetition prescription that you saw on the screen to begin with. Now, I also wanna take a moment to touch on progression, right? We've talked about scaling back and regressing, but this conditioning piece also progresses over time. We build some sneaky strength work into these movements and into these workout formats so that you'll get stronger and when you get stronger, you can add load to the sled, you can add load to the goblet squat, you can add load to the leg tucks, and you can even progress the ring rows to something that is more difficult for you. We call this format functional pump conditioning at Functional Bodybuilding, and you'll find it throughout all of our programs. But this particular piece was designed specifically to include those movements that will strengthen your knees, hips, and ankles. All right, when we strip down functional bodybuilding to its essence, here's what you're gonna find. Number one, thoughtful, joint-specific prep that doesn't throw away your precious warm-up time. Two, a balance of movement patterns and intensity efforts throughout a given week. Three, progressive strength work that prioritizes movement quality so you can build muscle but still move beautifully. And then four, purposeful conditioning that supports your goal, whether that's to become fast and powerful or 
in, the, in this case, build strength and muscle while still maintaining and incorporating knee-friendly movements. And I'll remind you the initial question that we asked, hey, I'm out of knee pain, now what? Well, the work that you saw today is now part of a series that Ben is incorporating into his own training. And you can sign up for my email list in the description below for more looks at functional bodybuilding training that you can do to get back into the gym after pain. You'll also get free training, nutrition resources on building muscle, keeping your body strong and healthy for decades to come. So go sign up now and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Never let your knees travel past your toes when you squat. Come on, all the biggest muscles are on the back of your legs. So you may as well sit back and use them. You've heard of him before. He's the knees over toes guy. I'm fortunate to call Ben Patrick a friend and a peer. But two years ago, when I first heard of him, he was just someone I admired and I followed closely. I've learned a ton from Ben and his training approach and friendship has helped me improve my own functional bodybuilding training methodology. Today, I'm gonna to share with you the top two things to know about the knees over toes method and philosophy and how they can help you look good and move well too. Before I dive in, here's a little history of why this topic and this movement captivated me so much. Even before knees over toes became the talk of the fitness world, I took issue with the concept of keeping the knees back when we squat. Every time I tried to squat like this, it was super awkward. There was seemed to be no way, no conceivable way, to keep my torso upright and achieve this vertical shin concept. It just didn't make sense, but of course, industry experts that I looked up to said it was right, so I kept trying. For about three of the first years that I was training in CrossFit and CrossFit sport, I struggled with knee pain in and around a former injury that I had. My knee would flare up every so often for seemingly no reason. So over time, I abandoned the concept of trying to keep my knees back. Allowing my knees to track forward as I squatted not only felt better on my knees, but it also ended up feeling better on my back. However, what did linger in my mind was this preoccupation with the concept of building a strong posterior chain. Well, in 2017, after I retired from the sport of CrossFit, I started dragging sleds in my training. I was doing backward sled drags, and I do recall thinking, man, this is the best quad pump that I have gotten since my leg extension days at the Globo Gym. I hadn't done a quad-focused exercise since those bodybuilding days, and it felt so good. My knees felt amazing, but of course, I crept back to my posterior chain bias and I left the sled dragging behind. Then it was 2020. Ben Patrick showed up on my Instagram feed, backwards dragging a sled and showing his other methods. I was instantly hooked on his content. He was speaking a language that touched on my decade long intuitive feeling. It was like, how did I not see this earlier? But it often takes a great teacher to come along in order to help us open our eyes to the obvious. He just spoke the right language at the right time for me. So I did what I always do when I find a teacher that I resonate with. I jumped headfirst into practicing his methods. I purchased his program, I started doing all the training, and I continued to listen to every bit of content that he produced. Now it's almost two years later, and I still incorporate many aspects of his methods into my functional bodybuilding approach. So here are the top two lessons that I've taken with me from ATG into my ongoing FBB pursuits. Number one, regress to progress. Regression is often the only way that you're gonna be able to move forward in your fitness. Ben stresses this so much in his program. All of his programs are built on a foundation of great movement first, then intensity second. Everything regresses down to the most simple form that anyone can do. Progress does not come from doing the hardest version of something, 
but rather from doing the most appropriately scaled version for your current skill level. If it's too easy, no results. If it's too hard, you get injured or you'll find pain. But if it's just right, that is where growth happens. I learned this very specifically with my ATG split squat. I took it all the way down to zero first, doing the most basic regressions that he coached. I lowered the weight and I worked hard to achieve perfect movement, focusing diligently on form for months. The common perception is that if you regress, you will lose your strength and your muscles will wither away. But what actually happens is that your tendons and ligaments get stronger. Your body positions become more efficient. The balance of strength in your joints from back to front and side to side improves. You begin to unlock access to new muscles and strength that you've never had before. And you will likely have fewer injuries that end up sidelining your training and therefore you get to stay in the game longer and more consistently. As I said, I have applied this in my own training to the split squat, but also to areas like my double-legged squat and pressing movements. I took specific periods of time to focus on squats and split squats so that I could achieve maximal knee flexion. Even if this meant having to use assistance, elevating my heels significantly, lowering weight on my back squats and front squats, and moving much slower than I had ever before. On my pressing movements, I made an effort to maximize my shoulder extension and flexion. I let my shoulder blades move and slide without being so rigid. And in order to accomplish this, I had to lower my weights and I had to change some of my movement patterns. Maybe you love pushing weights. Maybe you love pushing heavy weights. But if you love pushing weights hard out of fear of losing the look that you have, just consider how much longer you'll be able to keep a great physique if you can resolve your current pain or prevent it from forming in the first place. Consider how much stronger you'll be by stabilizing your joints. And I can also attest that bringing more small muscle groups into my lifts by improving strength through a full range of motion also added to both upper and lower body aesthetic results. Regression applies to all aspects of fitness. At Functional Bodybuilding, we prioritize that in our conditioning work, our strength work, our skill work, and in movements. We aim to teach our athletes exactly what it means to find their own sweet spot of quality and intensity. Lesson number two from ATG to FBB, prioritize joint specific strength. This approach to strength building is just as valuable, if not more valuable, than movement pattern strength. Here's two ways of thinking about strength. The first one would be build a stronger squat, build a stronger bench press. Another way to think about strength would be build stronger knees, build stronger ankles, build stronger shoulders. Movement pattern approach, joint specific approach. For a long time, I have biased a movement pattern focus in my strength training. And I still find that this is a valuable way of looking at how to construct training so that you spread work out around the body evenly, you don't overtrain specific areas, and you can create very easy to follow and practical training schedules for clients. But what I have learned is that we also need to be looking at joint specific strength. Yeah, I was conditioned as a coach to look at global patterns of movement and focus on building those. Looking at strength in specific joints, though, helped me to uncover two of my biggest areas of opportunity for better performance. Number one was my knee flexion. Number two was my ankle dorsiflexion. When I was introduced to the Nordic hamstring curl, I found out that my knee flexion was extremely weak. Also, when I was introduced to the tibialis raise, I found out that my ankle dorsiflexion was very weak. These two areas had been missing from my training for far too long. Yeah, I do lots of hamstring work with RDLs and deadlifts, but I rarely did anything that focused specifically on knee flexion. I also push a lot through the ground with Olympic lifting, with jumping, with double unders. So I do work my plantar flexion often in my calf muscles, but I rarely did anything to train the front of my shins and dorsiflexion. 
Ben's ATG approach to training really highlighted these strength deficiencies for myself. By implementing regular work with the Nordic hamstring curl and with the Tib raise every week, I found new strength and balance in my ankles and my knees. My aches and pains in my lower leg have been dramatically reduced and I feel much more stable in my lower body in all movement patterns that I perform. Look, Knees Over Toes is a great name. It captures the attention and it speaks specifically to the area of the body that Ben struggled with more in his life than any other. He overcame terrible knees to develop a very elegant training system. The reality is that ATG principles apply to the entire body, not just the knees. As an example, we can apply the same principles to the shoulders. Some of the ways that we do this in functional bodybuilding are as follows. We prioritize range of motion and strength in the same movements by choosing movements like dips, dumbbell benches, and parallel push-ups, where we really look at getting full shoulder flexion and extension. We practice this idea of structural balance of joints with upper body movements as well. We perform dumbbell elbowing rows, we perform ring face pulls to train the shoulder in various ways. And finally, just like Ben does, unilateral work is extremely important in the upper body too. Single arm pressing, single arm pulling, offset pull-ups. This way we can balance right to left in our upper body. Hey, I hope you found this video useful. A final thought that I have is to never stop learning. I took a chance and jumped into work with Ben. It helped me grow in more ways than I could possibly describe in this video. While I wish there was a simple recipe that everyone could follow to find that sweet spot of quality movement and intense effort, it just doesn't exist. You have to learn what feels right and what feels wrong. You have to have coaches watch your movement and give you feedback. And you have to watch yourself and reflect on your own progress and training. And this is why we believe being a thinking athlete is so important. At the end of the day, you know yourself better than anyone else and have the tools inside of you to guide yourself to best practices for a long life of movement. I'm proud to share these lessons that I've learned from ATG with you right here. I'm also proud to share those lessons through my Functional Bodybuilding Persist Training Program and to also provide opportunities for you to learn there as well. If you wanna build a great physique and improve your movement for life, then come give Functional Bodybuilding a try for two weeks, all for free. Click the link in the description below and join Persist. You'll get the best of the look good, move well philosophy and also reap the benefits of these two valuable lessons that I've learned over the past two years. Until then, take care. See you next time. Look good, move well. Hey, what's up functional bodybuilders? Recently, the knees over toes guy, Ben Patrick, paid me a visit here at Functional Bodybuilding headquarters. The last time we saw each other was about a year ago, and back then, what I was struck by was how much we had in common about our views on training. Well, when we got back together this year, it was no different. In the short time that we were together, we had a whiteboard session where we listed out the top six lessons we aligned on over the past year. Some areas that I learned from Ben and some areas that he has learned from me. Here we go. The top six look good, move well lessons with my good friend, Ben Patrick. Never skip prep. Warm up is so important, but warming up goes well beyond just blood flow. Preparation is an opportunity for so much more. Preparation should drive meaningful blood flow to the tissues that you're going to use in training. This is what's gonna lubricate your joints and help heal tissue. At Functional Bodybuilding, we believe in working on joint specific range of motion and stability when we prepare for training as well. In Functional Bodybuilding, we'll often call these prep sessions pre-fatigue. Part of the reason I like this term is that it helps clients know that it is okay for your body and muscles to experience a little fatigue in your preparation. It's intentional. You don't have to fear getting too tired out for your strength training and your Metcons. Ben loves the simple push and pull of a sled for prep. 200 meters of that with increasing speed as you go 
will get you so much blood flow to the knees, will strengthen the quads and the hips, and it will improve ankle range and foot stability as well. Don't skip this portion of training. It is probably more important than the rest of what you're gonna do in the gym that day. Number two, don't sacrifice range for load. What happens when you start shortening your reps, shortening your range of motion? When joints don't get to move through a certain range of motion, the brain begins to think that that range is not necessary. We stop sending fluid and nutrients to those portions of the joint and we will lose that range of motion over time. If we avoid movement long enough, we might even begin to see tissue start to degenerate, degrade, and die. A common mistake in the gym that we see is in an effort to lift heavier weights, athletes will shorten their range of motion. Most of the time this is subconscious, but it results in the same thing, shortening of joint range of motion and tissue health degeneration. So instead, choose movements that honor a full range of motion and never sacrifice your range for more weight. This will allow you to stay strong and build better mobility and thrive for years to come. Lesson number three, don't rush your weightlifting. The speed by which you lift can dramatically impact the outcomes of your training stimulus. One of the most common mistakes that we see is people rushing their lifts and moving too fast too soon. Slowing down your lifts with tempo allows you to build better movement control. It also allows your ligaments and tendons time to adapt and strengthening in various positions. With slow lowering phases of lifts, we can build a tremendous amount of strength and hypertrophy muscles without having to load super heavy. Going slow first is going to allow you to move fast eventually. So honor the controlled movement if you wanna win the movement game and the muscle building game for a long time. Number four, train both sides of your joints. Strength balance is critical to healthy joints. If more people started to look at training this way, we could dramatically improve athleticism and reduce pain and injury. Our bodies have elegantly evolved to do so many different movements, yet so many people pick only a few exercises or a few movements and they do them repeatedly for life. This unfortunately makes them quite imbalanced. Strength imbalance can show up as injury, pain, weakness, or aesthetic asymmetries. So one concept we believe in deeply is to be sure to balance the strength of your body front to back and side to side. Look at each joint in the body and train the opposing movements on all sides of that joint equally. Lesson number five, supersets for efficiency and work capacity. Yeah, getting more work done in less time not only gives you more freedom to fill the rest of your day with things that you wanna do, but it will also help you build your work capacity. Now, performing supersets, doing one exercise, resting, doing another exercise, resting and coming back, it's very effective for a number of things. But what we don't want is we don't wanna sacrifice the stimulus that we're after just for the sake of going faster and building more efficient workouts. However, with that said, far too many people are wasting time with long, unnecessary rest periods in their training. They perform one exercise, rest a long time, perform the same exercise, rest a long time, when they could have easily turned that rest period into something else. So fill your rest time with meaningful work. Make these supersets happen. And while you're at it, you will be increasing your work capacity. Lesson number six, eat to fuel your training. This might not be a new concept to you, but it's worth repeating move more and eat more. Nothing is more depleting and depressing to me than thinking about a life of eating less and less leading to less and less energy to move. Sure, caloric restriction has been shown in animal models to increase lifespan, but those animals also sit around and do nothing all day. And that is not how I wanna live. Eat real, whole foods, and eat a lot of it. Get calories, get nutrients, and then go out and move your body. This concept has helped Ben and countless others build the bodies of their dreams and achieve fitness levels that they have always aspired to have. Let's end the conversation about cutting calories and depriving ourselves and start 
to have a conversation about how we can eat more quality foods that then translates into fueling our movement. Hey, if you enjoyed this content, then be sure to check out the episodes that I have done in the past, breaking down the intersection of functional bodybuilding and then Ben's athletic truth group method. Those are gonna be down in the description below and you can watch all those full length videos on my channel. And be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel for future video content and drop me a comment below to boost the algorithm and so we can have a conversation. I love to hear your questions. It helps me know what to produce for you on the next go around of making more YouTube content right here. I'll see you next time. I'm sure you've heard that the back squat is the king of all leg exercises. And while that might be true, for a lot of you, it isn't. And the reason is, you can't get into great positions, you end up putting way too much strain on your back, hips, and knees, and your legs are the last thing to feel the stimulus. If you take nothing else away from this video, remember these two things. Number one, ankle mobility. Number two, full range of motion through every movement. Apply these two things to every aspect of your training on leg day, and you're gonna see muscle growth without pain. So let's start with a warm up that addresses these right away. The first is gonna be reverse Nordics. These reverse Nordics are gonna gently take your knees through a full range of motion to get you started. You can regress this by performing a heel sit or a weighted heel sit. The reverse Nordic can be done with a band to assist you, or you can do them with partial ranges of motion as needed. Russian baby makers are also great to get your knees and hips working before you squat. You can simultaneously work on opening up the tissues on the back of the legs and the hips in deep flexion. Try putting your heels up onto a ledge or onto small plates to really be able to sink deeper into the squat portion of this prep movement. And also the low dragon stretch can help you relax into a deeper range of motion in your ankle. You can stick with the body weight option or if you want to enhance this somewhat, you can place a kettlebell or some weight on your knee to help assist into deeper ankle flexion positions. You probably think it's time to jump into your back squats right now, but think again. If you've ever felt your best squat sets come at the end of your training, then it means that you haven't gotten enough preparation prior to squatting. So we're gonna pump up your legs with a little bit more pre-fatigue. For this, I love a variation of the knees over toes squat, and you can do this with a highly assisted form by grabbing hold of a band or a bar. There's two different ways that you can form this type of squat. One is with a straight hip, also referred to as a sissy squat, or one where you keep your torso a lot more upright and you drive the knees out in front of you way past your toes with your heels lifting off the ground. Warm up is done, pre fatigue knees over toe squats are done. Now let's buckle up for the heavy and hard double leg squats. In theory, the back squat is the king of lower body exercises, if you can do it perfectly. But the reality is that most people who are going from a desk job and sitting a lot of the day to trying to do a perfect upright squat, that doesn't happen very often. So we need to be able to make adjustments to our position in order to get the most bang for our buck without feeling pain. The first adjustment is to consider elevating your heels. Using a slam board or ATG buddies is going to help your knees come forward more while keeping your feet stable on the ground. Therefore, you're gonna end up with better knee flexion and hip flexion. More range at both of these joints means the leg muscles get stretched more and will get a greater stimulus. And if you have them, consider using Olympic lifting shoes with a built-in heel wedge. Now, I know there's a lot of barbell purists out there that say barbell back squatting is the only way to go, but I wanna encourage you to not be afraid to use machines particularly the Smith machine when you're squatting. Machines are just another tool for developing some stability and allowing you to manipulate your position so that you can squat more upright and you can get more out of your legs and less demand out of your back and your hips. So here are some quad focused techniques. Turn your toes so that they're pointed straight forward and this is going to target more of the outside of your quads known as the vastus lateralis or the quad sweep. If you toe out slightly, this is going to help target the inside of your quads, known as the vastus medialis or the teardrop. Bringing your feet closer together is another great way to enhance the mind-muscle connection and the leverage on your quads. The challenge with bringing your feet narrower that people will find 
is that they have a harder time with legs narrow getting a full range of motion at the bottom of their squat. This can be because of hip and ankle mobility restrictions. And if this is the case, then you definitely want to leverage the heels elevated that we talked about prior. Woo. Now your quads are absolutely feeling it, right? Because you've got your stance correct. You have your toes positioned correctly. You've figured out what to do to overcome your ankle mobility restrictions with heel lifts, and you're even possibly using a machine. Your legs are feeling this for the first time in your life, and your hips and your back are not pissed at you. So now, what can we do? Well, if you want to intensify things a little bit more, here's my tip for you for today the one and a quarter back squat and why you should use it. For this, you're gonna perform a full depth, come up about half to one quarter of the way of a full range of motion before you head back down and then complete the full repetition. The quarter rep will place the quads under greater time under tension and can specifically stimulate the quads by taking them right to the sticking point that they typically fail at in a normal repetition. All right, we're gonna get back to quad growing secrets in just a moment, but here's another growth hack. If you're not taking creatine monohydrate every single day, then you are leaving something on the table when it comes to performance and muscle growth, lean muscle growth. There is more evidence and more research done on this single supplement than any other sports performance supplement in the history of training. That is why I take creatine every single day. It gives me more muscle endurance, greater strength development, and over time, better muscle growth as a result. All you need is five grams a day. You don't need to preload it. You don't need to take big doses. Just take it every single day, training days, non-training days. You don't need to complicate it. Make it creatine monohydrate. If you're looking for a brand that is trusted, that's third-party tested, has great flavors, I choose Transparent Labs. These are my go-to guys for supplements. I'm popping a link down below so that you can go get 10% off with code Marcus so that you can start getting some creatine gains in your legs. Now let's get back to the tips on how to grow pain-free muscle in your lower body. Squats are done for the day. Your legs are feeling juicy, and now it's time to do some unilateral strength work. We're gonna balance you out from right to left, and we're gonna stick with our two themes of ankle mobility and full range of motion. Now there's a lot of single leg exercises that you could do, and some hit those two themes better than others. Step ups, Bulgarian split squats, pistol squats, reverse lunges, all of these are great. But if we wanna maximize range of motion and train the ankles, here are some of my other favorite options that I love. Those include the ATG split squat, the front foot elevated split squat, and the long step walking lunges. All three of these combine ankle mobility with full range in the ankle, knee, and hip. After putting in a full squat session, I encourage you to throw in one accessory movement for the ankles. If you don't wanna be the next victim of a weekend pickup game, Achilles tendon rupture, then make sure you're getting strong in this bottom position, stretch position of the calf raise. If you really take advantage of this stretch position at the bottom and you pause, this exercise is gonna help improve your ankle mobility for future squatting sessions. The calf raise is more than just a movement to build the calf muscles. It's an exercise that when done correctly can have a great impact on your ankle range of motion. You're gonna perform three sets of 10 to 15 reps, two to three seconds on the lowering and a one to two second pause at the bottom and the top of each rep. The workout is pretty much done, but I don't want you to miss out on the valuable minutes at the end of training to help extend your range of motion. A little cool down, mobility, each session adds up to a lot over time. So the first move we're gonna get you into is the couch stretch. There isn't a better stretch available to help open up everything on the front of your hip and your leg that's gonna translate to more upright, pain-free squatting. Here are a couple simple ways to make this stretch more approachable if you find it to be too painful or for some of you, too easy. The first is with a bench assistance. Having something to place your hands on right in front of your body when you're in this challenging position can be absolutely game changing. And if you're finding that you wanna increase the difficulty of this, you can elevate the front foot onto a weight plate and make this what we'll call the super couch stretch. It's not for the faint of heart and make sure that you've mastered the base level of the couch stretch before trying this. The second stretch and mobility point is going to tackle your ankles. This is the straight leg calf stretch. 
A lot of people will skip static stretching because they don't think it does much, but when you really remain focused for a couple minutes, it can really add up. My hope today is that you get attached to the outcome of stronger, better looking legs with less pain. Whether you can do a back squat in the traditional sense or not, doesn't define you and your worth as an athlete or as a person. You came to the gym to get stronger, to build muscle and to feel good. These movement adjustments that we talked about today and the way that you can fold ankles and range of motion into every part of your training is your key to unlocking the actual goal that you set out to accomplish in your training. So make sure you use these two tips in every aspect of what you're doing. Don't be afraid to make adjustments. And if somebody gives you a strange look for lifting your heels up on a back squat, let them be worried about themselves. You do you. This is going to unlock strength, muscle, and pain-free legs for your future. If you wanna learn more about building muscle while protecting and healing your knees, make sure you check out this video right here with my friend Ben Patrick, the Knees Over Toes Guy.